the Halley's Comet orbits around the Sun in a highly eccentric elliptical orbit with a period of about 76 years. Find the semi-major axis of the elliptical orbit in AU, the astronomical unit. Just in case, if you're not familiar with the astronomical unit, 1 AU is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. You don't have to memorize this, but 1 AU is 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. We know that the Earth also orbits around the Sun, and we know that the semi-major axis of the Earth's orbit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, 1 AU. We also know that it takes the Earth one year to go around the Sun once. With this information, we can compare Halley's Comet to the Earth using Kepler's law of periods. Period squared is proportional to semi-major axis cubed. Compared to the Earth, Halley's Comet has 76 times the period. So the period changes by a factor of 76, and the period has to be squared. So it's 76 squared, which is 5,776. This means the semi-major axis cubed changes by the same factor. We want information about the semi-major axis. That means uh, we have to take cubic root on both sides. So that means uh, the semi-major axis changes by a factor of uh, the cubic root of 5,776, which equals to 17.9. So the semi-major axis changes by that factor And the, this is the old value, so that means uh, the new value is the old value times the factor by which it changes. So the semi-major axis of the Halley's Comet's orbit is 17.9 AU. At its closest point to the Sun, The Halley's Comet has an orbit speed of 54,000 meters per second, and it is 0.59 AU from the Sun. At its farthest point to the Sun, the comet is 35.2 AU from the Sun. Find the comet's orbit speed at the farthest point. To find the speed at the farthest point, we can use the conservation of angular momentum, which is also the same as the law of areas. Angular momentum is conserved if the net torque is zero. For the comet, the gravitational force by the sun on the comet is a central force. By that I mean the gravitational force goes towards the center of the sun. So, if we use the center of the sun as the rotational axis, then this gravitational force provides no torque, and therefore the angular momentum is conserved. So the angular momentum at the closest point, the perihelion, equals to the angular momentum at the farthest point, the aphelion. We can treat the comet as a point mass. So we can use the angular momentum equation for point mass the perpendicular r times mv. The mass is the same, so we can cancel the m. At the closest point, the r is the same as the perpendicular r, because this r is perpendicular to the line of motion. Same at the farthest point. At the farthest point, the r is the perpendicular r, because this is perpendicular to the line of motion. So the perpendicular r at the perihelion is 0.59 AU, and the speed is 54,000 meters per second. And then at the aphelion, the r is the 35.2 AU, and the speed is what we're looking for, and therefore we can find the speed to be 908 meters per second at the farthest point. Another way to solve this problem is to use the conservation of energy. 
the comet is only under the influence of a conservative gravitational force. So the total mechanical energy K plus U should be conserved. The K plus U at the perihelion should equal to the K plus U at the aphelion. So the 1 half mb squared plus the negative g m m over r, the gravitational potential energy, should equal at the closest and the farthest points. Every single term has the little m, the mass of the comet, so we can cancel the little m. As you can see, to solve for v sub a using energy conservation, not only would we need to plug in the value of big G and the big M, the mass of the sun, but there are also more calculations to carry out. So when we are only interested in the speeds at the closest and the farthest points, it is much easier to use the conservation of angular momentum. However, if we want to find the speed at any other location, say over here, a distance r from the sun, the conservation of angular momentum would not be easy to use at all, because at this location, the r is not the same as the perpendicular r, the perpendicular distance between the sun and the line of motion. And it is not obvious how we can find the perpendicular r from the r. Therefore, if a problem involves a location that is not the closest nor the farthest from the sun, it will be better to use conservation of energy. And if we just need to analyze this qualitatively, we can use either method. For example, when the comet gets closer to the sun, the law of areas or the angular momentum conservation tells us that as the perpendicular distance decreases, the speed of the comet increases, so the angular momentum can stay a constant. Or we can use the conservation of energy. When an object falls closer to the Earth, it, or to be more precise, the object Earth system, loses gravitational potential energy. As the comet falls closer to the Sun, the comet, i.e. the comet Earth system, loses gravitational potential energy. Therefore, the comet's kinetic energy has to increase. So the total mechanical energy can stay a constant. Higher kinetic energy means faster speed. So both of these tells us that the comet's speed increases as it gets closer to the sun. 